All right, welcome back to Epicus Gamicus Music is here for a very interesting episode. We're doing UK versus USA. Should be fun. I got Luke with me. America. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious who's doing which country. <laughs> so um, what we did is we both got five um, attack bands. Um, and then you're allowed to use up to two defense bands. And it's just a debate to see who's best. Um, I think we're into the UK bands first. Uh, my first attack man is Led Zeppelin. All right. Uh, it was really hard to find something for this, <laughs> but I decided to combine Skinner and Kansas because they're both kind of arena rock bands, and they've both kind of got their anthems and their fast tracks, especially with Skinner. But Kansas kind of brings in like the almost like prog rock sound yeah that zeppelin occasionally <laughs> includes you know now as a serious zeppelin fan i cannot give this <laughs> to skinner in kansas see see i knew that that if i used led zeppelin it was yeah had to win you win me over like that but yeah <laughs> personally i would have used aerosmith as a defense because i feel like they're the closest to the first big american hard rock act See, I would have, but I would hate to give all of that power to Steven Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, so my second band is Black Sabbath. All right. I got Blue Oyster Cult here. <laughs> whoop de doo They're, uh, Obviously nowhere near as iconic. <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, Sabbath's got a harder sound at their start of their career, and... Blue Oyster Cult, if you listen to their first couple of albums, are kind of harder. And then both bands kind of become poppier later in their career. Yeah. So I figured it was kind of a sound and tone kind of equal there. Yeah, I, I could see where you were going with that. I don't, I don't know. I would. I don't know what to pick for this though, because like American, like there wasn't really American metal at that yeah. point. Yeah. I mean, okay, there was Alice Cooper, but was he really metal? He's more he's psychedelic just, yeah, at this point in time. more like a show-off dude. Yeah. Um, so give that one to Sabbath? I think so, yeah. Okay, um, the other one's probably the closest of mine. Um, yeah, Iron, Iron Maiden. So. And then I've got Dio as the counterpart here. Yeah, but even it being close, Dio was never really as big as Iron Maiden. Yeah, that's true. And even for me, Dio was kind of like Dio's worst band. Like he was great. <laughs> he's great in Rainbow. He's great in Sabbath. But he's he's just there's a couple great Dio songs, but it's just not quite the same as the first two st albums he did with Sabbath. Yeah. I mean, I think Ronnie James Dio just needed his guitar hero with him. He needs his Richie Blackmore or his Tony Iommi. Right. Yeah. Or it so doesn't work. It's Randy Rhodes or whatever. Yeah. Because I don't even know who, who, who I don't even know who the guitarist for Dio is. That's a very good point. He's not like he's not that famous. Yeah. Uh, okay. So my next one is another foregone conclusion: the Beatles. All right, I think <laughs> I think I found like probably the closest to an ideal combination to counter the Beatles here. Yeah, definitely. You got the Beach Boys and the Birds. Yeah. Like you can kind of you can see it pretty clearly here. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, the Beach Boys and the Beatles were like. Right up against Until each like, other. Yeah. Hmm. And then you've also got with the Beach Boys, like, Pet Sounds, which is kind of like yeah, their experimental album. Yeah, both bands went into a more experimental direction. And then you've got the Birds, which is basically the psychedelic half of the combination here. Yeah. So it's kind of like the transition... Covering the whole career. Yeah. And the Birds are another band that tried a lot of different ideas in the 60s. Yeah. While also being kind of poppy. Yeah. Although, this is the Beatles, so they kind of have to win. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, okay, so my fifth band is Queen. And I countered that with Styx. Interesting choice. Yeah, I thought so. But, you know, you kind of got like... It's hard to stand up to... There's a lot of songs that I think Styx puts out an equivalent to, but you've got Bohemian Rhapsody, which really messes with your head when you're trying to find yeah. a band that... But, I mean, 
Queen have tried so many different genres. Like they did, yeah. Then like they did disco, they did new wave, they did. Which is honestly why I thought Sticks might kind of stand up a little bit there. Yeah, because you've got some of their harder stuff, especially on songs like Renegade or stuff like that. But you've also got like kind of more of a prog sound on like um. What am I thinking of? Uh, I don't listen to sticks. I don't know. <laughs> On just a second, folks. You think of that song? I know. I know Renegade because that's their most famous song. But apart from that, oh, like, I, I, uh, yeah. I don't know if I would call that their. Well, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, for me, I would have had to use probably Boston. Because they're the only, like the big arena American band I can think of. They don't they don't fit, but they're at least. I arena. would go with that, but they just kind of have like that one sound, you know. Yeah, yeah, they're very consistent. Like if it's Boston, you can pick it out in the first couple of notes. Oh, I was thinking of um, Grand Illusion. It's kind of like a, almost like an orchestral sound, you know. But it's also rock. So I thought it'd kind of go along with Queen in that way, at least. Yeah. It kind of like, kind of has all that together there. Yep. And then you've got like the early Queen albums, which are kind of lesser known, while the early Sticks albums are also yeah. kind of. Yeah, I've been listening to early Queen recently. Some of the the, the non hits are really weird. Yeah, exactly. Like they they go all over the place. Like that's why I thought it would be like a pretty even match there yeah it's kind of tough yeah wait you, you think sticks actually has a chance i kind of do but i mean they're like they're nowhere near as well known as queen yeah that's right yeah i mean people still listen to queen today so they're still a very <laughs> popular band meanwhile <laughs> Sticks is over here just hanging out on the side of the street. Get, getting Renegade played on classic rock radio. That's kind of it for them. <laughs> oh, man. All right. What's up next? So uh, I think it's time for your, your bands. All right. Uh, my first up, we've got kind of a cheater band here. Nirvana. That's the thing. We can't, you can use Nirvana. I mean, they're well, American I mean, band. <laughs> it is... It is an American band, but at the same time, it's kind of entering a genre that there's not really... I mean, you could argue Britpop as a counterpart for it. Yeah, which I did. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, at the same time, it's just kind of... Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I counted with Oasis and Suede, both Britpop <laughs> bands. Um, and I think, I mean, Oasis kind of at least in the UK, kind of filled the void that was left by Nirvana. The yeah, void that here was that. filled with the Foo Fighters and stuff like that. Right, but then that would make it... I, mean, I see what you're going with here, but it would make it an, an equivalent to post-grunge and not so much Nirvana. Yeah, but I, I don't know what... I mean, that's why, that's why I kind of use Suede, because Suede are a little heavier. Right. A little more underground. Like, I, I can definitely see your logic with that one. But it's like, I mean, the the UK in the 90s was Britpop. There wasn't anything right. else. Like, everybody <laughs> was doing like Britpop. It wasn't some weird early 90s, like, just bare bones rock fad going on. Yeah, there wasn't a, um, oh, what's the American band that did, did that? Um... Uh, what was that band? The band that's like, they're like classic rock, but they're from the 90s. Like 80s. Or are you thinking of um, Black Crows? Yeah. There's, yeah. No, there's no British version of that. Right, yeah. No, yeah, this is definitely Nirvana. <laughs> yeah. All right, my next one is NWA. Oh, and I saw you did this. I'm like, motherfucker, he's using <laughs> hip hop. That's not fair. <laughs> I thought the exact same thing when I put it in. Um, so, uh, 
I had to do some research. Um, I, I could but, see that. You went pretty obscure here. <laughs> well, I mean, the, who, nobody knows any British rap artists, so... It's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking, man. So, um... Like, actually, I had heard of this band. I just, I just forgot about them. But uh, a band called the London Posse, one of the one of the very early British hip hop artists, and they do they do fit in the late eighties, early nineties style of rapping, <laughs> but with a British accent. Right. And um, yeah. uh, and then I use someone more modern, Lethal Bizzle, big fan. So that's my counter. Gotcha. <laughs> it is. Insufficient. I was about to say, do we need to ask here? <laughs> and now for something else, which is very unfair. All right. We got um, Chuck Berry. Well, what the hell am I supposed to do with rock and roll? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, I, I had to use uh, Cliff Richard and Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm like, it's a Britain hadn't figured out how to make music yet. What am I supposed to so, do? <laughs> when, when I texted you to ask if any genres were off limits, <laughs> this idea is exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> oh, man. And this is why this episode is so entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's You're not really. Spring that British invasion and metal thing on me. I'm gonna go full force. <laughs> yeah, well, there's not much point uh, debating that one. Yeah. Uh, what's the next one? Okay, my next one is Santana. Which, which I'm actually surprised that you want to leave this one in because my counter is Eric Clapton and the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Let's see, but here's my strategy here. You've got that Latin sound. Yeah. Which, I mean, Hendrix plays with it a little bit on certain songs. And Clapton is always kind of reaching towards it, but you got Carlos Santana on that guitar. And it just... I just honestly can't think of another band that does what they do. Yeah, but you see, I get two bands. <laughs> <laughs> And it's Jimi Hendrix and You're just Eric come Clapton in with sheer force. Yes, and take it. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's your fifth one? <laughs> All right, my fifth band here is ZZ Top. Uh, I counted with Status Quo, which I th I kind of think is fair, although Status Quo are not really quite as creative as ZZ Top. And they were really. I mean, I don't know how big they are in Britain, but. Kind of a one hit wonder over here. They're probably about as big as Easy Top are here. Okay. So it is a fair fight, but they didn't they didn't do have a like a new wave um Yeah New Wave Cowboys era like a... which is the best part of ZZ Top. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think ZZ Top's gonna take yeah. that. Yeah, because I mean say this quote, they just sit on a riff. Yeah. Every that's song true. is this riff. And their riffs are only tiny bit different just a slight change yeah. they are a very repetitive band um well since since i beat santana um we don't need the tiebreaker but the tiebreaker was going to be um ireland versus canada which canada would win because it's u2 versus rush and you, you yeah. get to rush um i mean it was either u2 or thin lizzy so it's kind of yeah but yeah, that was a fun episode. Um, hopefully you guys agree with us. <laughs> and if you don't, so well. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what you could have, if you'd used um, Skinner as a southern rock band. I thought about doing that, but I needed them as like this, my strong American band. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time.